question described above conforms most closely which one of the following generalizations? So it's a principal issue, right? So I'm going to read a specific situation and I need a more abstract. So when I see specific language, I want to generalize that language. Okay. So when I, the moment I see leather and fur, that, that's, that's taking me someplace else. Okay. Uh, the production of leather and fur for clothing labor intensive. is labor intensive, which means these materials have tended to be expensive. Okay, I got it. I got it. So expense is a broader thing, um, and uh, uh, certainly labor intensive is a broader thing. Let's see what we have here. Uh, but as fashion has moved away from these materials, prices have dropped. Uh -huh. While prices of some materials that require less labor, so there's the labor thing, uh, in their production are more fashionable and have risen. So, it, it, so the argument appears to make the case that that the the cost of being fashionable uh, is offsetting the cost of something being appears to be that if, as I read this, uh, if we say in the first sentence, production of leather and fur for clothing is labor intensive, and, and which means that they've tended to be expensive. So you establish how something gets to be expensive. And uh, then you say, but as fashion moved away from some of those materials, so we're not using leather and fur now. The prices. Uh, while the prices of the materials have required less labor, uh, in their production, uh, they're the, uh, they're more fashionable. Uh, the prices and what's more fashionable has risen. So you're kind of saying to me that the price of being fashionable exceeds or equals to or exceeds what was the original price of being labor intensive. I'm just looking for something like that. So let's see what we have here. Uh, A the price of any manufacturing. So I'm out there. I, I wouldn't keep reading because it's not about any manufacturer. Well, the, the price of any manufactured good depends more on how fashionable than good. I'm sorry. Depends more on how fashionable that good is than on the materials it is made from. No, not that, not that it's more expensive due to that. Uh, uh, it's not a question of how fashionable as to degree, uh, what you're saying is that there is a, when fashion goes up, price goes up, and when a labor intensive material like leather is there, that will become less of a factor. But this doesn't limit, this says that that, that good is on materials that is made from, it can be made from diamonds, well diamonds are a material. But so, silk, it's not selling me anything about silk. Uh, so, I, I'm not there. Did, you, did anybody pick A? I did. Yeah, I see it. I see it as I go I through see. this. You're not picking it. You picked A? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I do see that as I go through this. Um, but, I, 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 it, my, I, let me keep reading. B, it is more important for the materials used in the manufacture of clothing to be fashionable. It's not a question of being more important. It's got to do with with, uh, with the influence of, of that on price. Uh, C, materials that require relatively little labor in their production tend to be fashionable. No. D, the appearance of a manufactured good is the only thing. No, once I see only, no. Uh, and E, cultural trends tend to be an important determinant of the prices of materials used in manufacturing. No. Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah, because if, if, leather, if, if leather became more fashionable, it would become more expensive, notwithstanding it still might be more or less labor intensive. So, uh, e, e, uh, Is it a cultural trend, though? I mean, you are, well, generalization. Well, what, what would you refer to the fashion as? Well. Well, it's a principal issue. But is it fair to say that fashion is an example of a cultural trend? It's one of many things one might refer to. I mean, I would, not that I have any fashion. 
I like to think each day I leave the house with a new ensemble. But is it, is it, it, does it seem, it tends to seem that it is talking about labor and the price of the material. It is. Right? So, um, I'm producing the material. So, it, it sees a, a juxtaposition between manufactured material and fashion. So then that's why I chose A because it talks about um, because it's labor intensive, the production of leather okay. for, for clothing is labor intensive. And right. because well, of that, it tend to be expensive. Right. And when they're not used anymore for that, then the price seems to. See what you're doing? Look at what you're doing. Look at you doing. Look at you. Look at you. Right? <laughs> you take it. You, we, we all had established facts, right? right. Now you know you have the wrong answer. Okay. Right? You know you have the wrong answer because you've seen the right answer, right? But but before you saw the right answer, you inferred that A was the answer. Yeah. yeah? Uh -huh. And now you're a mule. <laughs> now, you, yeah, now you're just now you're just now you are you are now the Bernie voter out there who said they're screwing me, they're screwing me. Uh, might be right and might be wrong, but 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 see, which one do you say? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Reshoot, reshoot. Let's let's reshoot. So let's try to reshoot on it. Uh, and and you're trying to get to the position where where you where you you understand why the inference is wrong. Yeah. You don't want to continue <coughs> down the journey of I've got my wrong inference and damn it to hell, I'm going to stay with it. So let's go back and just, because I agree, I like A, I'm not, I'm not it's just not the principle. Uh, so, so if I look again at that situation, I say, okay, what's gonna be about this? The situation is, I'm told that the production of two items, leather and fur, mm -hmm. but those items are for clothing. Right. Uh, that, that the production is, is, is leather intensive, and that means that the materials have tended to be expensive. Mm -hmm. So the first sentence is creating the connection between, <coughs> in that something is labor uh, 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 intensive, it tends to be expensive. That's the end of it. So that's my first explicit fact. Next one. But, which is kind of important, mm -hmm. right? Which means I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to stay in that position. So whereas I had connected the cost of something to uh, a fact of, 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 of labor, now I have fashion introduced, right? Right. There was no fashion in that first one. No. Okay. So a new fact introduces fashion. And I'm, I'm saying now that you have the answer you want to work with, fashion is a subcomponent of culture. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So you want to work to, we're it trying to get to the yes. <clears throat> we're not trying to stay on no. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. But as fashion has moved away from these materials, mm -hmm. so now it's not fashionable to be using leather and fur. Well, that's fashionable. The prices have dropped. So, so culture, has, as culture has moved away from these materials. Correct. <coughs> so it's the same level of labor intensiveness, but mm -hmm. it's, fashion has intervened, yes. right? Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, the prices of leather and fur have dropped. Mm -hmm while prices of some materials that require less labor in their production mm -hmm. are more fashionable, are more fashionable have risen. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes a very strong case for, for the, the greater the role fashion plays in something, right? the less important how labor intensive it is. Mm -hmm. So that's now, now go back to, and remember it's a principal question, so we're now trying to walk this up the ladder and let's look at E, we'll go, we'll, we'll happily go back to A, drink the Kool-Aid, but let's get E down. E says, cultural trends tend to be an important determinant of the prices of materials used in manufacturing. The first sentence was, was, was taking us to things that are uh, manufactured. The second sentence is taking us to things that uh, have to do with fashion, which is a subcomponent of culture. So I'm saying in that second sentence, fashion is a subcomponent of culture. And that makes it a principle. And in the first, first sentence, the production of leather and fur for clothing 
is a subcomponent of manufacturing, mm -hmm. and therefore, as as uh, cultural trends have moved things in a certain directing the direction, <coughs> it's no longer the labor that's forcing the price up; it's the desirability of the purchase, which is the fashion that's that's driving it up, and therefore, culture tends. I'm sorry, culture trends uh, tend to be an important determinant of prices of materials used in manufacturing, as opposed to a the price of any manufactured good. And, you know, I'm really not comfortable with that. You, you, you think that this question falls more on the because what, what's 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 well? What's let me go through it. Hang on a second. Yeah. The price of any manufactured good depends more on how fashionable that good is. That on the material it's made from, it, no, you know, because it's not about necessarily the materials it's made from. It's about the labor cost. It wasn't labor intensive. Uh, uh, so again, I'm not. I, I I can see picking a, but upon reflection, I see dropping a like a hot potato. So is a reading also? price of any manufactured good in this case they're talking about clothing and fashion yeah but any manufactured good could be like a bicycle or a toy yeah. or something yeah. it's too broad. any is too broad i believe even even in the context of a principal issue any is too broad um, but even even it's it continues to to trouble me by 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 saying it depends more on how fashionable. There's nothing in this argument that says, you know, maybe if you buy Gucci, it's perceived to be 40% fashionable, but you buy some competing, you know, Clothier, and that's 90% fashionable. So one is perceived to be more fashionable. There's nothing about that. It's just fashionable. So it's not a question of that, a relative context between how fashionable is it? The argument is you're either fashionable or you work. And when you're fashionable, the price goes up. Cultural trends replace the word fashion. Absolutely. So, well, so that's where they throw you off. Well, yes, yes. Is if you're not. But, but in the principal issue, that's what you're looking for. Yeah. In the principal issue, you're looking for um, more concrete words in the argument and more abstract words in the answer. So yeah. you, you know, you're looking for that. I'm looking at the, the thing that says following generalization. That's principle. Principle. Word generalization means principle, no doubt about it. Well, is that, does that fit that though? This answer? Principle? Yeah. It seems Correct. To the word generalization means principle. Right. right. Because it seems that it would say which of the following, if true, would, you know, but I guess. Yeah, really. I mean, I can't choose the principle. Total. All right. That's a nice pothole they put in there, though. I'm sorry? That number 15 was a nice pothole they put in. Yeah. To step in. But again, that's the psychometric thing, right? Mm. Do you have sense as an individual? I mean, there are people, I mean, I, you know, you, you know people, you may be one of them, you may not be, but you know people who they just don't have a good sense for their own uh, capacities. You know, either they, they have a sense they are more skilled than they really are, or they have a sense that they're less skilled than they really are. Well, as a lawyer, it's kind of good to be grounded, generally grounded in that discipline, so that you have a sense for, you know, I kind of know what I'm good at. I definitely know what I suck at, because there's way more of that, so it's easier to bump into, you know. <laughs> well, well, you know, but, but that's, I'm saying it's, it's, it's just, just real life profession where, you know, I got to know when to hand something to somebody else, and somebody else is really you should know when to hand something to me. Right. That's a marriage, you know. I mean, it's not just law. That's that's what makes relationships, you know. But it's not a uh, it's not a marriage uh, arbitration clinic. Come on, what else? Let's do number sixteen since we're on our page. All right, all right. Only because we're on that page. Otherwise, I would have said no. Right. All right. It's fair to say. Sixteen. Uh, the conclusion of the argument is most strongly supported that which one of the following completes the passage. So you stop for a second. The, the issue's a little bit different. 
they're telling you we're gonna they're gonna give you a conclusion, right? And then what they're really saying is we want you to strengthen the argument, but we'll give you the conclusion. Just, so this is a strengthening question. Right, because I read this and you say the conclusion, so I know there's a conclusion in there. The conclusion of the argument is most strongly supported that which one of the following completes the passage. So you're going to give me a premise that had it been in the argument, it would have supported the, argu the argument's conclusion. Okay. Well, I, I don't know if it's a technique, but I notice that you read the question before you read the passage. Absolutely. The question is the issue that must be read first. Okay. Because that's the only reason you're reading the passage. You're not reading it for any other reason. I mean, we're not reading it to be uh, curious. We're reading it to solve. Okay. Okay, so what do I have here? Oh, this sounds so exciting. In in most of this forest, the expected outbreak of tree-eating Tuscan moths. Oh, yes! <laughs> it's corn. Yes! So I'm just going to say moss from that one. I don't know about you, but I don't know what tree-eating tuskets are. So I'm just going to say, in most of this forest, the expected outbreak of moss should not be counted. Stop! Free the moss! You know, I mean, I, free the moss! We like the moss! Okay, I got it. After all, the moth is beneficial where suppression of forest fires, for example, has left the forest unnaturally crowded with immature trees. And, oh, okay. Well, so, so Ed, we want the moths, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we were given one example where we would like the moths, right? Mm -hmm. And that is when the forest is unnaturally crowded with immature trees, yes? Right, right. yes. Okay. So if we want the moths, don't we want, uh, if we had a forest that was, uh, was, was crowded with immature trees, wouldn't that mean we should get the moths and leave them alone? Mm -hmm. yes. That would be the answer. Because that's all they gave us. So A says, mm, and more than half of the forest is unnaturally crowded with immature trees. Well, in which case, go moths go. And uh, so A's the answer. And, and yeah, this tree-eating Tuscan stuff is just there to throw you, right? It's just verbiage that doesn't matter. So does that make sense? Yeah. Right, would it? Hmm? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, what do we got? What else? Can we go to section three? Number three? Oh, oh we can go to section three, of course. What do you got for us? Number 16. 16? <laughs> All, all bad person. <laughs> I've always felt that if I was a bird, I'd be a bad person. <laughs> so what's the issue here? Which one of finding it true would most help explain the bad, the strange behavior I've done? I'm very comfortable with. Okay. So it's a paradox. That's the strange behavior. To help explain strange behavior uh, suggests to me that it's going to be paradoxical. Babblers, the bird species, live in large cooperative groups. Got it. Then I'm ready to move on. Each member attempts to defend the group by sounding a loud bark like call when it spots a predator, inciting the others to bark too. So I would be tempted during the test, but you, you stop for a second and you're. So I, I'm not, I wouldn't do this, but I would definitely be tempted having read that during the test to do something like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then if everybody were at the same point, everybody would go, <laughs> <laughs> and the proctor would just run for cover. But what I'm trying to get, do you, you, you want to feel the test. You know what I'm saying? You want to you become essential. You want to method act. You want to become on, you want to be on the stage really participating in this, right? So I get it. So I stop walking and then all you guys stop walking. All right, all right, we're babblers, you know. But I got it, I got it. Because otherwise, why would I read this? I don't care. Okay. So now we're all barking merrily. Babblers, however, 
are extremely well camouflaged mm -hmm. and could usually be safely mm -hmm. unnoticed by predators. Mm -hmm. ah. So why are you barking? Right? You're you're not really noticed. You you got plenty of chow. Why are you barking? I got it. These predators indeed mm -hmm. uh, generally become aware of the presence <coughs> of babblers mm -hmm. only. only because right only. their shrill barks which continue long after most members of the group have been able to take cover mm. and which signal the group's approximate location to the predators. And that's the paradox, right? That last line mm -hmm. gives us the paradox. It's like, if you, what were you thinking when you were about one, right? Just keep your mouth shut. But we've been asked to explain this strange behavior. Does everybody agree the strange behavior has to do with the collective barking when there was no need to do anything because the predators were not a threat because they didn't know you were there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in order to explain that behavior, don't you have to attribute a benefit to that behavior? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we were given a drawback, right? We were told this, this barking is going to attract the attention of the predator, right? Mm -hmm. But if we want to explain it, doesn't there need to be a benefit as well? And that will be the answer. So I don't know what that benefit is, right? But now I'm reading to say, okay, I, I agree with you. I agree. It's alerting the predator to my presence, and the predator, predator was not aware of that. I agree with that. However, there's this benefit to it. That's it. Uh, a, babblers uh, fly much faster than predators that. No, that's not. Are you talking about why do they babble? Why are, you, why are you barking like this? Mm -hmm. right? That's not good. B, the predators are generally intimidated by large numbers of babblers. Well, if everybody's barking, what is the... And you hear you are again, right? They're really requiring you. You're given a fact, and that's like choice B is a fact, right? Which is predators are deterred by a large number of babblers, from which you might infer if all the babblers are barking, might the predators be aware that there's a large number of um, uh, babblers there? Yes. And according to choice B, uh, with that with that awareness, uh, they are going to be intimidated by the babblers. Yes. Yes. And that would be a benefit to the behavior, would it not? Yes. Yeah. That would be the answer. Does that make sense, Pearl? And this, if you can just do this at home. You know, if you just did a little bit of this every day and say, I'm getting and it's I'm getting to yes, you with me? Yes. Not not I'm i I'm I'm not I'm not sticking on no, I'm getting to yes. And then if you spend time doing that, you know, and you come in here, I'll spend as much time as can be, think, well here's how I got to yes, and most of the times we'll get there together, not all the time. But sometimes I won't explain it well. How come E wouldn't be a, an option? Because the benefit, if you read the answer, the benefit is like reading the other animals instead. So they're letting, it says like it makes them aware of their proximity and location. Okay, E says, now, what I'm trying to explain is babblers in their relationship with their predators. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. So it's a narrow sort of issue of the babblers and their predators, and like what's with the bark. Okay. E. Animals that live in close proximity to babblers, does that make them predators? We're talking about predators of babblers, right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree with me that animals that live in close proximity to babblers may not be predators of babblers? Right? Sure. Now, this, there's an opening there. Uh, animals that live in close proximity to babblers are also preyed upon by the predators that prey upon the babblers. But those animals may not at all be a threat to them. You know, they have nothing to do. They're just getting eaten. The predators come round, right? And they have their choice of chow. But the chow, there's no reason, I have no reason to believe the chow, 
is a, is a predator of the battler. Right? So that doesn't, the explanation here in B is that the battler's conduct is getting the predators to go away and predator is used in choice B, right? Whereas the, in, in choice D, predators is used, but, but as a victim as well as the babblers, right? So we have babblers and we have the victims. We have, we have predators who are the victims. There's no connection between the babblers and the third party. Yeah. You know, so, okay, so babblers are A, the predators are B. Now there's species C. Why would the babblers care? Not the third party? Well, I don't know anything about species. Right, right, but 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 well, it's there, it's there's no the evidence that the barking is attracting species C to chow down on species B, which would have chowed down on species A, and and and, and it required you to go past B. It means pretty straight. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty straight forward. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Like three. Yeah. Hmm? three I don't like that. Twenty-five. Oh, oh crap, monster! Look at the lens. This is. I'm oh, sorry, that just slipped. Out. <coughs> crap! I haven't said that in a long time. I used to say that when when the kids were very small. It was unlike here. There was no person in the house. That was <laughs> crap, monster. That was that. That was when I was really upset. All right, so first of all, you don't do it. You with me? 25, you're in that digital format. At most, you put a flag over it, or you leave it blank. The flag means I'm coming back. I just don't want to do it right now, right? Leaving it blank means I only go to it when I've gone to the ones with the flags on it. So this, for me, would probably be blank. Uh, but let's see what we can do here. Let me erase this. The flawed pattern of reasoning. So you're going to get two of these. And your plan may be skip them. And maybe put in an exception. Well, two exceptions. One, if you're really good at this, then of course don't skip them. Two, the other thing I would keep an eye on, if, if this were to be question number eight instead of question number 25, and its length was not prohibited, it's probably going to be straightforward. But it's not, it's 25, so I, yeah. Uh, and how would I approach flawed pattern? Well, I'm going to approach it either by the terms or by letters A and B. So be ready to start writing in your little blue book. And say, well, what do I have here? At Morris University this semester, most of the sociology majors, and I would stop there. Doesn't it sound like the sociology majors belong to Morris University? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like Morris University would be the larger unit of thing, yes. So if you were doing this, you say, okay, so it's Morris University. And what do you have here? You have uh, sociology, sociology majors, majors right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what, what do I know about the sociology majors? You're taking introduction well, to Well, most, studies. not all. Again, that word most is important. Mm -hmm. Most of them are taking intro to social psychology. Mm -hmm. So I would do this. Most of these people right, are taking the intro mm -hmm. to uh, social psych. Okay. And that's most. That's the key. Most. But most of the psychology majors are not. Mm -hmm. So the psychology majors will also belong to Morris University, right? Right. They're not taking it. Hence, a 
and again, it's flawed. Mm -hmm. right? Hence, there there must be more sociology majors uh, than psychology majors in this class. Hence, therefore, yeah. must what? Hence. Right. So it's saying therefore there must be so more sociology majors than psychology majors in this class. And that's flawed. And the reason it's flawed is because we don't know the numbers. So this is from that bucket of flaws, right? This is percent and real numbers. That, okay, so most sociology majors take it, so I'm gonna put 90 here, right? Okay, and 90 means 46. Yeah, yes. but they never gave me this number, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but what if there are way more psychology majors? Let's say there are uh, 240 psychology majors. Most do not take this course. Most do not. Okay. So say 40% do. Because 40% is not most, right? Okay. So 0.4. You'd have zero. You'd have six carry one. You'd have 96. So it's flawed. Because you didn't tell me how many students are in the undergraduate course. That's what you're getting tested on. Does anybody need me to redo that? Talk to me. This is definitely on your test. Is that reasonably good? Again, I have no I mean, like, I understand it, but that doesn't mean I've explained it well. Hi. <laughs> Can you go over it one more time? There you go. There you go. It's important. Not for the example, but for the principle, right? And the principle is think about the word most. When when I say the word most, doesn't that compel me to go if I go to percentages, don't I have to go over fifty percent? Yeah, I would say ninety percent most. Well, well well, but the range would be anything over 50%, right? And, and, and meaning, the word most begins at 50 plus 0.01%. So we're saying most, most is quantifiable? Mo most is understandable as a, per as a range in percentages. The, ra the range of percentages, when you say most, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what the raw number is. What is most of 10? If you're dealing with whole numbers, what is most of 10? What if you have 10? What is most of 10? Is it nine or eight or seven? Well, well what's I the lowest six. number? Six. Six. Right. If you go into fractions, you'd have, you know, depending on what fractions, you might be using five and one thirty second, five and one sixty fourth, whatever, right? Five and one hundred one twenty eight. It's Elizabeth Warren at that point. You know, it's, you know, but okay. So most just means anything above. 50%. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's what the word most means. So when you see the word most, it's implicating percentages, right? But that's not telling me anything about the raw numbers because you would all agree to me that if I say, does everybody agree that 60% that, that, is consistent with our with the word most, yes. yes. Yeah. And that is consistent with the word you fail to be most. You're not most, right? right. Everybody great? Yes. yes. So that doesn't mean a damn thing without the numbers. Because now if I use the number, if over here, most of the people in Staten Island Queens, right? Most of the people in Staten Island eat pizza. Uh, we'd have to change that. Let's go to 90 percent. Mm. Actually, it's 92.36 to be. All right. Okay. So say, uh, it's really if I can't do Queens, because you know, who doesn't eat pizza? So we got to go out of the city. What about Patchwork? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, like, oh, no, I, I know, I know, Boston, I know, let's go Boston, <laughs> because if they are eating, if they are eating their pizza, they should stop immediately, yes, if yes. you've ever had pizza in Boston, it's like, really? Now you should go to 20%. <laughs> 
But you, you get, you get. But yeah, yeah, it, let's say you're right, right. Let's go down to 20%. If all you did here is you say, most of the people in Staten Island eat pizza, right? But not most, right, of the folks in Boston <coughs> eat pizza. And then you concluded, and therefore, there were more people eating pizza in Staten Island than in Boston. You'd be wrong. Right? Because the population in Boston is what? A thousand times higher, right? So so you know, so if you broke this down, just say you was you know, you had a uh, hundred people in Staten Island and you got four thousand in Boston. Say that was the ratio, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And then you multiply it by the fraction. So this means ninety people in Boston ninety people in uh, Staten Island are eating pizza. And this means uh, 0.2 times this. 800. 200. 800. 800, right, right. 800 are eating it over here. So what you're getting tested on is percentages need real numbers to come to valid outcomes, right? And it works in reverse. Real numbers need percentages. Um, you, know, you can have a very, very, very high real number and it'd be a very small percentage. You know, if I said, and I don't know how many stars there are that we're aware of in the universe, but if I said a billion, does that sound like a high real number? A billion stars? Well, sounds like a high real number, right? A hundred trillion, a billion, yeah. But it's probably a very, very, very low percentage of all the stars that are observable, right? So any time in a flaw, you're seeing most, it goes to percentages. Right? Uh, and without the root, without the whole number, we have nothing. So now, if we go back to what they what they wrote here, at Morris University, think about this now. If in if you were prepared, how you would see it in a different light, right? At Morris University, most students who take sociology attend this intro course, right? Mm -hmm. Most students who take psychology do not take the intro course. Mm -hmm. And then the conclusion is, and therefore, most folks taking the intro course are social studies major. Right, come from here. Mm -hmm. And isn't that entirely analogous to Staten Island and Boston? Yeah. And so that's how you learn in law school. I'm saying if you can learn, you know, it's just you got to want to do it. And, you know, law school can be incredibly boring. And for many people, you're there for many hours, and it's just, it's its really tough. So you're just, bored for many hours? Well, you're gonna be in school for many hours. Oh, okay. And the person at the front of the, and again, I don't mean, but you, I, I'm sure your experience has told you that there are people at the front of the room who are more or less effective in holding your attention, yeah. right? In law school, I don't know that you're going to find, you're going to find what you're going to find. I, I, it was not my experience, right, that there was a lot of concern with holding my attention. In other words, what I found was um, they, they knew their stuff, right, and they were eggheads, but I wasn't an egghead. And so the eggheads in the class did really well because it was an egghead talking to eggheads. <laughs> but that's the way it was, right? But then there was Peter. Mm -hmm. and I'm saying, I don't understand what the son of a bitch is saying, and they're not rephrasing it, you know, they're not going out, and, and so what I'm saying is law schools can be very challenging for people like me. But this is the way you will learn, which is, can you do that? Can you walk this back up now? It's going to be on your task, mm -hmm. and say, okay, and that's flawed. And then the answer here is uh, D, and it just follows the same path. Here is most of the veggies, <laughs> right, but now veggies <laughs> is Morris University. Yeah. You're saying most of the veggies, right? Most of the veggies. Available at the Valley Food Organic. So I'm going to, so most of these guys at Valley Food are organic. <coughs> Uh, but most of the veggies at Jumbo are not. Mm -hmm. And you, 
you can see the conclusion, right? You can see the flaw. And therefore, you're going to tell me, right, that there are more veggies here than there, but you haven't told me anything about the number. So the conclusion here is, thus, more organic vegetables are at valley <coughs> jumbo. jumbo. Just like over here, you said to me, there are more sociology students than, than psychology students. Do you see it? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I can't, well, I probably can. I was going to say, I can't stress enough that the, this reasoning, right, is exactly the reasoning you're going to have to demonstrate in law school. There is no escaping it. None. None. You know, so if you can't do it on the LSAT, that's what they're doing. You're like, if you can't do it now, can we really risk that we're going to be able to do it later? And not everybody can do it. Um, but it's, Again, if you try to learn to prepare for the LSAT, the way you're going to learn in law school, um, you're going to have a much better shot at this. And this is the way you learn in law school, where everything is done by example. You get the principle now, right? Right. right? And you get that, I'm trying to communicate the principle by exploring the example. And you would be able now to create your own examples, wouldn't you? Well, if you did that, you're demonstrating, one, if you're able to understand, then nobody's blowing smoke up your ass. Because you're understanding, right? If you're in a fog, well, then you've got to get your ass out of the fog. You don't have to get it out today, but you've got to get your ass out of the fog. Preparation, preparation. When you diagram, yeah. when you diagram that type of question, it may, for me anyway, it makes it look really clear. Yeah. Do you recommend diagramming those type? Or else, and again, that for me, yes, but hang on. That takes time, right? And this, I absolutely would diagram. Meaning, the original argument, but I would not diagram A, B, C, or D. What I would be looking at is where did it go off the rails, right? So this would be there, right? And then I would look at A. So I believe, look at A, you know, and say, where would I go off the rails? So if I'm looking at A, I don't know what the answer is, right? So for me, I would go AE, right? That's what I would be doing on the test. But if I went to A and said, I've got to follow this, right? Okay, most of the paintings, so I'm going to go, most of the paintings on display at Metro Art Museum, so that would be up here, right? Most of the, Metro Art Museum, most of the paintings, are from the 20th century, okay. But most of the paintings the Metro Art Museum owns, but that, that, what, that, that's not what this is. It's not about owner, but, 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 but owns are from the 19th century. But that's not following this. Not, that's, it's not about a difference between displaying and owning. So I'm not, if I jump down to E, at Acme Realty website has photos of most of the houses, but of fewer than half of the condominiums. So there they're going, most of the houses, but fewer than half of the condominiums that Acme is offering for sale. So Acme must have more houses than condominiums for sale. Oh. You know, but we've gone from photos to the actual house. So I, I, again, I'm not. Um, I have photos of the house, so that's supposed to be Morris. Or the website, I guess, is supposed to be Morris. And on the website, I have photos. Right, but of houses, but fewer than half of the condos. So it's houses and condos, I guess? Yeah. Yeah. So Acme must have more houses for sale than condos. Again, I'm just not. I think the wrong part there is that it says fewer than half instead of most are and most are not. Um, D matches it. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm just not. Uh, uh, We're looking for flawed metrics, I guess. Let's see what's so, so, so D is C. <coughs> yeah. And C says. In Sanford. So here I'm starting with uh, uh, the arbitorium. And so that's the arbitorium up here. Uh, most of the trees are local rather than exotic. Okay, so I guess it would be trees, local and exotic. Or most are local rather than exotic. Therefore, in the area, now you went from the, the from the place to the area, yeah. and that's not what's happening here. Right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and well, from you know, with E, as I look at that. It, it, it's just Acme. If we look back at E, it says on the Acme website, uh, I, I'm not seeing uh, it. I don't see the equivalent to psychology and sociology. You know, but but would it be fair to say that this is something you want to think about having on your I don't want to do list? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's long and laborious. It's yeah. and, it's, 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 and it's it's really it's there for folks consuming, really. who are heading off to you know Yale or Harvard. Uh, if you're not heading off there, don't keep yourself out of you know St. John's or Pace or Toro uh, because you're you know you, you're stubborn and you 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 got to go to Yale or Harvard because you're not going to go anywhere. But you're going to go somewhere, just not the law school. Uh, so what else? Uh, is, isn't 26 simpler? I don't know. Would, be, would it be fair to say we could try it? Yeah, I would be fair to say. So you want me to weaken the argument? Is it 26 in section 3? Yes, sir. Okay. So, what do I have here? Most seriously. And so the director, the director says, although the production costs of my latest film are very high, there is little risk the studio will not recover these costs. So stop for a second. Uh, I'm weakening the argument, so I'm going to challenge that. So what am I challenging? The person says to me, yeah, 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 the production costs of, are high. But don't worry about it. Well, I'm worried about it because you told me to weaken it. Uh, so now you have to explain to me why I shouldn't worry about the production costs. And here's your explanation. Even if the film is unpopular, much of the money is being spent to develop innovative special effects technology that could be used for future films. Oh, that's, that's not straightforward to me, Edward. Mm -hmm. You know, wouldn't it be fair to say, if you're going to make the argument, don't worry about our production costs, uh, because, the, because we get this special effects technology out of it, mm -hmm. haven't you assumed that the special effects technology will offset the production costs? Yes, fair to say. Yeah. Well, we're weakening the argument. So what if we establish in weakening the argument that the special effects that you get don't have a whole lot of value? Yes. That, that would be the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there is a D. In the past, many innovative special effects technologies were abandoned after the films for which they were developed proved to be unpopular. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Pretty true. Anything else? Yeah. 13. On section three? Yeah. Okay, 13. <coughs> I'll have another one of these. Uh -huh. uh, the reasoning in uh, which one of the filing is most similar to. Okay. So again, I would see that and I would be pulling out my, well, pencil of head, whatever you're going to bring with you. And, uh, 
And I'm just looking at how does the reasoning move here. So it says here, I, I, I love the book. Well, but you know, I look at what they've done, right? And I just read the first like five or six words, and they're just so playing with you. Have we had, have we had some dialogue about words that can be used in the place of the word if? Yes. Right. And here it is. So the word if, when it's just if, right, you get no matter where it is in a sentence, you can begin a new sentence with the word if. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So when the word if, which by the way, there is no difference between the word when and the word if. Right? When the word if is in the middle of the sentence, if you want to follow that by simply saying, I'm going to read from the if, you're in business. Right. I will get wet if it rains. Mm -hmm. If it's more natural for you to read that as if it rains, I'll get wet. That's what you do. So look at, look at these what these these bastards do. You know? Well, because they're saying they want you to follow reasoning that is most similar. So reasoning can be similar, but structure can be different. Meaning placement of the language can be different, but the reasoning has to be the same. So when I read this first sentence, pollution is a problem whenever there are people who are different to the environment. Well, whenever means if. He said wherever. Well, whenever that, well, well wherever. wherever. But this yeah. means if you say pollution is a problem wherever there are people who are different to the environment, haven't you just said when there are people who are different to the environment, pollution is a problem? Yeah. Yes. And when you say, when you say that, did you say yes? Yes. Yeah. So you want to be, this is going to be on your test, right? Because this is, it, it, you know, so you look for pattern of reasoning, right? If you're going to do these at all. And I'm going to say, well, hang on, look, I'm taking this test in my terms. So what you just said is when, which means if to me. So if I say, if I use if, Right. If or when there are people who are different to their environment, which would be A, and again, I wouldn't be writing this out, that, but that becomes A, if A, right? When or if there are people indifferent to the environment, when there are, pollution's a problem. That's B. So all that means is if A did B. But I had to reverse the sentence. And, and, and they do it again. You got to love them. They do it at the second clause. <laughs> and nature's balance is harmed whenever there is pollution. So I'm going to say, so you aren't just saying to me, so when there is pollution, nature's balance is harmed. Yes. Ah, go figure. So if B, then C. Nature's balance is harmed. So, whenever there are people who are indifferent to their environment, that's A. Whenever meaning if. Nature's balance is Which is C. Yeah. That's, and that's what they're going to do. One answer choice will mimic that. If we go directly to the credit, it happens to be A here, and they give you any. Okay. So when I say, just again, get the language. Any dessert with chocolate is high in calorie. What's the difference between that and if a dessert has chocolate, it will be high in calories? If there is no difference, or whenever. When a dessert has, you know, with, when, is, when, when a dessert is made with chocolate, it's going to be a high calorie. So it's following this. So whatever word you want to do here, if, when, whenever, in this case, any. So if you say to me, any dessert with chocolate is high in calories. I 
that. Uh, and, and any dessert high in calorie is fattening. Now, remember, they, they did it in a different order on, on the original, right? But here they just said, this that you need to fat. Well, then, anything with you know, it's gonna, just going to connect these two. And uh, so, any dessert with chocolate is fat, if A, then C. I just don't know. Again, I think the exercise is great in terms of preparation because you're expanding your mind. You're not heavily tested in this form insofar that it brings an awareness to you because the word if is dominant on this test, no doubt about it. Um, you know, but I think what people don't get is I don't have to use the word if to put you in the same position. So here they use the word any, and, and there'll be people who'll be looking for the words to be identical. They don't have to be. Would that be the same like any and every? Would that be the same interchangeably as if and when? Any and every. That's why I got stuck on. I kept saying like any dessert, every dessert. I don't know why that hung up on the, the words. Uh, you mean, is there any difference between A and B? No, between A and every. Well, you know, we'd have to run through hypotheticals. Well, that's uh, what I did. I sat here and I wasted time saying any dessert, <laughs> Well, um, anytime, anytime it rains, they'll get wet. So if it rains, they'll get wet. Right. Every time it rains, they'll get wet. If it rains, they'll get wet. So I don't see the difference. You know, you know, I there might you, be I some. I guess you just make sure I didn't miss something. Well, I, well I, you know, I mean, Maybe I don't. I you know, as I'm reading all the choices. There may be some egghead out there, you know, who oh oh no, here's one situation where it doesn't work. <laughs> But common sense tells me there's no difference. But this, uh, we don't think about the word. Again, it's not the big words. Like, what does that word any mean? Well, is any all? You know, any time it rains, not the same as every time it rains, right? great test. And again, law really is about the little words. Honest to God, it really is. Number 11. Well, wait, before three. we move on. Um, now, was that like a metaphor? Yes. Because when you say move on, it implies we're going forward. Before we move forward to a different question yeah. on 13, how come D could not be the credited answer? Well, let's take a look. Oh, look at that. See the trouble you cause? Always. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> so D is. Every dessert with chocolate is high in calories. So every dessert. I'm already chocolate. But every dessert does seem to me different from any dessert. When a dessert. Right? When a dessert doesn't mean every dessert. It means a condition subsequent, I mean, a condition that hasn't occurred yet, right? If I say, if a dessert, am I saying every dessert? No. No. So I'm troubled already. Every dessert with chocolate is high in calorie. So there's no conditionality to that statement. Uh, but let's see what it says. <coughs> so every no, so 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 the, but the, the point is when you look at D it says every every fatty dessert has chocolate but that's not true 